So, hey everyone, I'm Felix, as you already know. Thank you so much for coming to my presentation on a lovely Saturday morning or noon if you're in the East. So, picture this before we start. A writer sits before a blank page, waiting for words that don't come. It's us. It's the writer's block we all fear, the vast emptiness of possibilities that stifles creations. We need stories. How can we get ideas for them? Large language models. They generate text, which gives you stories. But they have some very serious limitations, which I will go over. The main problem with a large language model lies in the prompt which you give it. If you give an unclear prompt, the resulting story or piece of text may not be clear. And if you forget to specify uh, certain details, the model might give out some details that you don't like. For instance, you might want to write a story about an animal. You, were, you wanted it to write a story about a bear, but you only specified an animal. So the LLM writes a story about a bird. One way or another, you get a story that you don't want. So how do you solve this? As they say, a picture is a thousand words. So why not leverage this? So I was wondering, can visual imagery and user feedback improve the quality of stories generated by large language models? And to answer this question, I have two hypotheses. One, converting the subject of a story to images, selecting the best one, and feeding it to an LLM result in higher quality stories. Two, extracting additional context from the generated image and pairing it with user feedback further improves the overall quality of the story. So I coded up three AI models using three methods, which I will refer to as A, B, and C. Let's start with method A. So for the sake of explaining the methods, I wanted to create, let's just say I wanted to create a story about a lonely bear. So for method A, a user would provide an input like a lonely bear. Then the user input gets converted into a prompt, generate a 200 word story about a lonely bear. That goes into a large language model like GPT-4 and out goes your story. Method B just has some added features on top of method A. In addition to uh, feeding text into GPT-4, the image, uh, an image, a series of images are generated from the input provided by the user. As you can see right over there, there is a nice little image of a bear. And then the image and the prompt are fed into GPT-4 and out goes your new story. Method C adds on two more things. First, you extract key details from the image using the clip model. And an example of this would be a lonely bear sitting on the beach during winter. In addition, you would also put additional context like the bear's name is Magnus. So you combine the image, the text description, the key details, and the additional context from the user for an even better story. So to conduct this experiment, I generated 100 story subjects for each of the top five story genres, as you can see above. A story subject is the main character of a story, like a lonely bear. And for each of these story subjects, each method generates one story with a given length, which is either 200, 500, or 1,000 words. And I have to make sure that the story length is within 10% of that given word requirement. After that, I randomly assign three to five prompts or nine to 15 of those stories to a human grader. Those human graders were my classmates who I recruited as volunteers. And each story is graded on a scale of one to 10 based on the five criteria below, as you can see. And to get a composite score, we just average the scores from all five dimensions. So here are some examples of the stories that were generated. They're all roughly the same length, given the prompt, a lonely bear. So as you can tell in method C, it's typically, for this specific case, method C provided the most descriptive story out of all three. And through our overall results, given varying story lengths, method C did the best across the board, followed by method B and then method A. The story length 
seem to improve the overall quality of the story, as you can see in the bar graph on the right. So what did we learn? Through our data, we found that converting the subject of a story to an image results in higher quality stories. And adding user feedback and extracting key features from that image further increases the quality of the story. And last, the more words in a story, the higher quality there is. So to further my project, some next steps I could do are fine tuning my large language model for a specific genre of story, increasing the number of prompts maybe to 1,000, automate scoring of the generated stories, experimenting with di different LLMs. As I mentioned earlier, I used GPT-4, but in the future, I could use different models like uh, Meta's Llama model, and I could generate stories in a comic book style using visuals instead of text. So in the end, this isn't just about writing. This is the future of creating ideas, not just through words, but through visuals. Thank you for your time. All right, let's nice. take a look at the question. Yeah, nice work, Felix. Uh, so we do have one question from Veronica. Uh, she asks, how do you anticipate video impacting the quality of these stories? Wait, could you clarify a little more on that? Because for the sake of this uh, project, it only uses individual images. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe if we could reinterpret it live, um, instead of one image, how would the story quality change if we used like two sequential images? So instead of like one image of a bear eating a bowl of porridge, what if the bear ate a bowl of porridge and then the next image was the bear laying in a bed? Oh, I get what you mean. I understand. So I've done a little experimenting with using multiple images in combination. Uh, it's a lot harder than just using one image. For instance, I've taken oh, a picture of a frog and a bear and try to combine their stories, make a story about the both of them. But it is definitely doable, though it may sacrifice some quality. Totally. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely kind of a, a quality and complexity trade off when we're dealing with, you know, something this uh, multi dimensional. Um, I have a question too, Felix, do you mind going back in the slides to your results page? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so right here, I'm looking at, you know, 7.4, 8.3, 8.7. Can you just clarify for me and for the audience, uh, you know, what what the label of that access, access is? What, what are we looking at? What are the units here? So as I mentioned before in my methodology, each story mm -hmm. is graded on a scale of 1 through 10 based on the five criteria below, all of these. And then you just average them out. So that means for these scores, let's say method A in 200 words, it means that on average, method A got a score of 7.4 in terms of its imagery and setting, character development, mood and tone, user engagement, and originality. Great, yeah, and so these are all from uh, your volunteer graders, your, your yep. students, or sorry, your classmates. Yeah, these are from my classmates. Absolutely amazing, Felix, awesome.